we are starting our walk at Coniston Railway Station and then we're walking following the railway line down to the lake. The first trains arrived in 1859, enabling local mines, quarries and forests to export heavy produce far more efficiently than horse and wagons or boats ever could. Coniston captured the imagination of visitors and the village and the station grew. However, like many smaller lines, the railway was closed in the early 1960s for economic reasons. I wonder how long these violets have been here. They look so lush and profuse growing here. No, these are, yes, these are the bells poppies. The end of the ones. When the tourists first started coming to Coniston, they would have been attracted by its situation and seen it as picturesque and not um, as sort of lowering and gloomy as some places could be which were high up in the mountains. In our walks in the Lake District we've been struck by the number of trees we've seen that have been pruned um, either just with the branches lopped off or chopped right down maybe because of disease or to make them safe because it has been a very windy winter but it's been quite striking The railway line would have crossed the road here and continued on its way along the edge of the field to Torva Apart from cutting trees down through ash dieback, for example, or overhanging branches from the safety point of view, there's also coppicing, and this block of woodland has been coppiced. The coppicing is a traditional form of woodland management where trees are cut down and allowed to regrow from the stump. The stumps are left to grow, regrow until the timber reaches a suitable size, normally takes 7 to 20 years, and then the area is coppiced again. And in this way, the coppiced woodlands often contain a number of compartments at different stages of regrowth, and that provides a wide variety of habitat and a sustainable source of timber. The fence is around this area because the biggest threat to coppice regrowth is browsing, mixed grazing by the deer. And the temporary fence, which is what this is, will protect the regrowth for a few years until it's no longer vulnerable to, to roe deer. Because even one deer can cause a lot of damage. This railway line was carrying the copper ore from Coniston, went, went down to the coast, and then from there it went down to Swansea, to Copperopolis, where it was smelted. And it is quite amazing to think of that. But also these woods would have been full of activity because the trees would have been coppiced then, and then the products of the trees, for example, charcoal burning was really important. There were we can still see apparently the low levels of woodland where the um, charcoal was was burnt where the wood was piled up so that it could be really hot inside and then the charcoal was used uh, in the industries in the copper industry in Coniston and something I hadn't realized but the bark from the oak trees 
is treated and that produces tannin and that's used with the animal hides to make leather so that was a really important part too and of course the wood was used for all sorts of things and apparently to make the um, Somerset levels to be laid down to make the Somerset levels so it wasn't just bird song and caravan parks around here it was full of industry at one time We had to leave the railway line to follow the footpath, now we're along the road, but looking down we can see the railway line as it was. These rather impressive looking stone gate posts look rather strange in the in the field just like that but we guess they were the gates for the level crossing when the railway line went along here after walking along the old railway line for about a hundred yards we have to leave it now to go over the bridge and for a walk down to the lake We're down near the lakeside now, looking across to Brantwood, the home of John Ruskin, who was there in the 19th century. He was a poet, a painter, a philosopher, and a very influential thinker. And he tried to help the people of Coniston when the work was not there. Coniston water used to be known as Thurston water after the Norse god Thor. It is eight kilometres long, the third longest lake in the district, and it is the lowest, only 105 feet above sea level. We are approaching Coniston Hall with its very distinctive chimneys, uh, which Wordsworth was fascinated by. There was a row of ancient trees, since fallen, that on the margin of a jutting land stood near the lake of Coniston, and made, with its long boughs above the water stretched, a gloom through which a boat might sail along as in a cloister. An old hall was near, grotesque and beautiful, its gavel end and huge round chimneys to the top o'ergrown with fields of ivy. It's good walking below where and looking up to the houses and the buildings that we were above when we were on the railway line. We can see we can see the chapel and the church quite distinctly. We have finished our walk going along the old railway line, back down along the lake. We finished it in the Bluebird Cafe for a lovely lunch. And now the rain has come down. Thank you.